So the sun's interior, we cannot directly see uh, because the photosphere is the deepest layer of the sun that we can actually see. That's the first place that photons are free to stream out of the sun. And so since we can't see the interior directly, we have to form models to figure out what's going on inside. And this model that we have is based on all of the evidence, based on everything that we can learn about the solar interior through other methods. Um, and then it also rests on, you know, just general physical assumptions about what the sun is made of and how it behaves. So our model assumes that the sun is made of ionized gas, which is a plasma. It also assumes that the sun is stable over time. So it's um, not growing or shrinking, for example, and it's also not cooling down. So if we put these together, um, the standard solar model has one most important uh, concept and that's called hydrostatic equilibrium. And this is what holds the sun um, up against its own gravity over time and also prevents it from uh, shrinking or growing or otherwise changing. So the net idea here is that the sun is always pulling itself inward via gravity. So it, it would um, collapse under its own gravity, except that there's some internal force that's holding um, all the layers of the sun out. And so what is that internal force? That's the pressure of the hot gas from the inside. So if the sun were suddenly to stop um, producing energy via nuclear fusion in its core, then uh, that pressure would become less and less over time and the sun would collapse in on itself. And this happens to stars uh, in uh, the late stages of their lives when they die. Um, and for different masses of stars, this process will play out differently. We'll talk about that in the stellar evolution chapter. Uh, but for hydrostatic equilibrium, we have these two forces, gravity versus pressure, and uh, balance is maintained because these are always equal for some given layer. So this kind of black dashed line that I've drawn on this diagram indicates that I'm just thinking about one particular depth in the sun. Um, and so for each layer in the sun, all of the gravity from the outer layers pressing in has to be exactly equal to the pressure from the inner layers pushing out. If there are little changes inside the sun, like if the nuclear fusion rate goes up or down a little bit, then all of these forces have to respond in order to keep the sun, sun stable. And I wanna show you how this works using a simulation. So let me share that with you in the chat. Um, and I wanna ask a couple of questions as we look at this simulation. One of it is what happens if the core of the sun starts to contract slightly, then what would happen to the pressure and temperature inside that core? And then the second question I wanna ask is what happens to the volume of the core if I change the temperature but hold the pressure constant? All right, so pumping it full of gas again. And the first question that I had was, um, what's going to happen to the temperature and pressure of the gas if I let my core contract? So imagine that this is all the gas that's within some volume of the core. And right now it looks like the temperature of this gas is around 300 Kelvin and the pressure is around 30 point, ranging from around 30 to 31 atmospheres of pressure. So now watch what happens as I let this volume contract. So I'm going to let that contract, kind of pauses when I do that. And now you can see that my pressure has gone up. My temperature hasn't increased considerably. If I continue to contract, my pressure continues to build and build. All right, so the um, the net result here is that is if my core contracts, then the pressure will increase, right? And I can also, um, over time, this temperature should be actually going up. I'm not sure why it's not showing that in this particular simulation, but the temperature and pressure should each increase as my volume decreases. So if you've taken a chemistry class, then this is related to the ideal gas law. Um, I can hold some of these variables constant while the others change. And so if I change any of the one variable, the others can respond. So in this case, I'm decreasing the volume, increasing the pressure and temperature. Okay, the other question that I had was, um, what will happen if I try to keep the pressure the same, but increase the temperature inside the core? 
So for that, I'm gonna use this option of pressure constant. So I'm holding my pressure constant, allowing my um, temperature to change. And if I do that, if I add heat now to my system, then at a constant pressure, what that does is it expands the whole system. So that means that if I have my, um, you know, the sun's core and the fusion rate goes up a little bit, if the pressure stays the same, then that means that the core will actually expand. All right, so changing temperature um, can change both pressure or volume. So all these things are connected. And so what does this mean? It means that there, if there are changes in the fusion rate, which change the internal temperature of the sun, then the pressure and volume will both change in response. And so going back to the idea of hydrostatic equilibrium, if the pressure changes, then it means that uh, the sun will have to expand or contract in order to balance the gravity. So the idea with uh, any equilibrium process is that the equilibrium is maintained as variables change. All right, so if the core contracts, then the pressure will build. And so the, um, eventually the temperature will get larger and that will cause the core to expand again. So it's basically self-correcting. Um, this can be a little bit confusing. So I have a homework question for this week that kind of walks through that uh, chain of logic. All right, so a question for you. Um, it can be a little abstract to think about pressure inside the interior of the sun, uh, but maybe you have thought about pressure in, for example, the ocean before. So in this instance, does the diver, the fish, or the octopus experience the greatest amount of pressure? All right, exactly. I'm seeing most votes for C. The octopus, the, the deepest object, experiences the greatest amount of pressure. This is true when you're diving underwater. It's also true as you dive into the sun. So um, with that in mind, let's say that I have diagram A and diagram B. In A, I've got two different layers drawn, one closer to the surface and one deeper. And I've got those two same layers drawn in B. And now the, um, the, lay, the kind of the sizes of the arrows are meant to illustrate the amount of force. So the amount of gravity and the amount of pressure. So in these scenarios, which of these best illustrates the gravity and pressure of layers that are at different depths? So the pressure is greater uh, as we go deeper and the gravity from the overlying layers is also greater because there's now more mass here pressing in um, so that's a higher force of gravity. So higher gravity and higher pressure as we go deeper into the sun. Um, and when I say gravity, I don't mean literally like the amount of gravity that an object would experience of that at that point, but the uh, force from the mass pressing in. It's not exactly, gravity is not the best word for that, strictly speaking as a physicist. Okay, so um, in addition to the changes in pressure as we go into the solar interior, there are other trends in, uh, for example, the density. So as we go from the um, surface into the core, then the density rises. Uh, this is as the pressure rises, so does the density. Um, and so it's actually very high. The, the central part of the sun is 20 times the density of solid iron. So it's very dense indeed. And this is exactly why it's a high enough pressure and temperature to allow nuclear fusion to happen. Um, but the photosphere on the other hand, just outside of the convection zone here is uh, much less dense than Earth's atmosphere. It's uh, very gaseous. And even though it looks like there's a sharp boundary, there's not. So if you were to actually dive into the sun, not advised, then it, it would seem like there wasn't a boundary. You would just go into, um, you know, thicker and thicker gas as you descended in. Um, the other trend that's really important is the temperature. So the temperature also increases as we go into the core, um, not quite as rapidly though as the density does. And so the core of the sun is 15 million degrees Kelvin, which is extremely hot. Um, the photosphere is 5,800 Kelvin which is still rather hot, but um, not near as blistering as the temperature at the core. 
So this high temperature is maintained via nuclear fusion. And then as we go to outer layers, um, energy is being transferred to the surface.